different one out there. Okay. Oh, if we do get to the point where we want to make a motion, mm -hmm. whatever this is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're about ready to start. Is it okay if we start? Good, yeah. great, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, so um, this is uh, an important meeting, but before we start the formal aspects of the meeting, and Catherine, I understand you became a partner um, just past what month or so. Get your first yes, I did. But congratulations. Thank you. So all the good training you had over the years on New Canaan, I'm sure, it was very helpful. <laughs> we um, first item on the agenda is the. Uh, the vote to approve the minutes of the October 6th meeting. Uh, do we have a motion on that? I'll move it. Have a second, Robert? Great. <laughs> All favor? Opposed? Terrific. Um, and I'm not sure exactly how you'd like to <clears throat> organize this. I mean, it was you know plenty of material, right? So we could stay, we could stay here all week if we wanted to. You know, <laughs> probably have something else to do as the, the rest of the team and then do we. So uh, you want to maybe just Take us through the material sort of in the audio sent it out last night. Is that the way to do it? Yeah. Yep. Good. Yes. Yeah. We'll talk about the main highlights. I'll, I'll probably just, you know, we'll go through the MDNA, which is the major parts to address. Uh, I think the, um, you know, maybe from a overall standpoint, the, the objective today is to um, have really the audit committee. Well, I, I really, the objective is to have management recommend to the audit committee uh, that we accept the material and, and move it on to the next body. Um, you know, then we want to hear from uh, Joe and Catherine that they support that and that they support moving it on as well. And then, you know, either we're going to be a hundred percent complete, probably unlikely, it'd probably be a little something here or there that we need to do. Uh, but then hopefully move it to the uh, town council. Um, and I guess the board of finance um, here over the next short period of time. And um, and then um, and then we would have a meeting right now. I think it's everybody's thinking sort of the end of February the twenty seventh or something to have the town council ask whatever question they might have and approve it at that point in time and then file it. Right. Right. Correct. Good. So I know there's a lot of hard work for us to get here, so we appreciate that. Um, and um, sometime during the course of the session, we just sort of touch on, you know why we're a little bit late compared to other quarters and you know sort of what our aspiration is for next year which i'm sure will be to get it filed well into december right uh, <laughs> but uh we'll be able to touch on <laughs> sure. you want to touch on that i mean if you if you want to try for halloween that's okay too but we can uh you know or thanksgiving that would be okay so yeah, we'll well, say. it would make my holidays yeah. easier for yeah. us sure and all of that's, us right yeah. to get thanksgiving and christmas yeah. or the holidays that's the way so that's why June 30th is is a good time because you can get done for the holidays. Right. I would like to say June 30th, but unfortunately, you know, we got to still wait those two months on uh, the filing for uh, the ESF up at the state no, and that. the yeah. deadlines, but, you know. But yeah. yes, right after but that, a lot, it allows a, over to you it allows a, a freer holiday than a, a December year in. Yeah. No, I, I would like to turn it over as soon as possible. Good. That's the goal. Okay. Yeah. Good. So uh, where do you uh, you know? There's so much material. If you would just be very specific as to which item you're covering when you go through it, um, based well, on what we sent out. Definitely. Um, I'll, I'll touch on in regards to the MDA because that's basically the highlights of the financials um, and how uh, GFOA does it, plus also how we, we normally would put those highlights into it. Um, I know a question, um, a big question was in regards to our uh, net position. It yeah. decreased uh, 10 million uh, four. Um, the large amount. So you're, on, you're on page. Oh, sorry. I'm on the MDNA, uh, the MDNA. So the first page on, MD, on the MDNA. Which is what page? Oh, 18. it's all by itself. I'm sorry, the MDNA. Sorry. It's a separate page. It's yeah, not it's in... a separate document. Okay. I might have put it's it as the fifth or sixth document. Yeah, right. 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 Sorry. 
this one, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, here we are. Yeah, that was a that was a big question because it was a net uh, decrease. But the understanding to to this committee and everyone is the fact that we granted we did a grant of uh, ten million to the library. Now there were other components that went into that. There was the ISF fund and pension and OPEB. Um, the ISF fund. Well, let me take a step back. So between general government and the small bonded capital, we had a increase to it of about four point seven million dollars to the the net balance to the um, the net um, position. position, thank you. But the offsets of those were um, the ISF fund, if, if you recall, the, the Board of Finance in doing the ISF fund for uh, 22, they had a, a large reserve. So they took it down. They were using the reserve to offset. So the expenses in the general fund for the Board of Ed contribution, I believe it was brought down to just under 9 million. So that used the reserve in that fund. So that brought that net, that's part of the net position. But then the offset of that is that we had small bonded projects that had an increase. So those, all those smaller, all those components netted down to a small amount because they had offsets, but the library did not. The library was a grant. That's straight expense to us. So the bulk of the 10.4 million is that grant that we gave to the library in 22. So mm -hmm. without that, obviously we'd only be down 400,000, right. but the fact that we use the reserve on the ISS, <clears throat> excuse me, the ISF fund was, a, it was uh, right. to bring that down. Is that, is that um, 10 million a grant? I mean, it's, I know what it is, but is it, it a grant? It, it is a true grant to the, right. um, it's classified as a grant to them versus the, the, yeah. What they're doing now is a loan, a promissory note that's going forward. That would be handled is that, differently. Is that going forward now? Uh, that's still going forward. We just have to, you know, get the agreement signed. And um, fortunately for the library, they're getting the donations in. I know I'm kind of segueing, but they originally thought they would make the um, start drawing down in December. Right now, it's next month, so they're doing really well, and and it's a beautiful. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I guess I would just, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't know how much we want to digress. And edit, that. edit. MDNA, you know, but to me that that sentence is it'd be, it'd be much more descriptive if you put the word grant in there rather than payment. I went back and forth. I originally had grant, yeah. and I, I, I think we, I told her to. Yeah. Okay. We were going back and forth on going. If we say grant, if, are people going to think it's a federal grant or a state grant? So I can that's definitely right. change it back to grant because that's what I I was going back and forth on how people. Well, I mean, it's not it. it's not mandatory, but I just uh, contribution plan. Yeah, because I. I said to Chuck, I said to Chuck, you know, uh, you know, what is that? You know, I mean, yeah. no, so I well, that's, the, you know, that's, that's the grant. I said, oh, I got that. I understand that. Yeah. I wasn't sure how the interpretation of the word. Okay. How much is the bridge loan? Well, right now it's the promissory note that we're having is $10 million. They don't believe they're going to come close to so, that. So on top of this 10, there's going to be a, another 10? No, they don't believe it. That's, it was originally 13. It then came down, I think it was 13, then it came down to 10, then they were down to seven, but we've left it at 10 just in case for some other, you know, if, they're, so, if their so, contributions don't come so in. So it's in the range of seven to 10 as, as a temporary bridge loan. Right. Say. And uh, after the a town conversation, doing. they don't even believe it's going to go to even the seven. And so, that's but we're leaving the document in place. And that's expected to be outstanding for... Um, I, I believe it's up to 10 years that they have for a repayment. Yeah, but they, they, they have estimates, right? Oh, they do. They have their... Um, their cash flow of when they think when it should come in. Their estimates, I think, on their cash flow, I think it's going out three, four years on when they think, but they're getting it in sooner than they thought. So um, that's a good thing for them. And that has an in, that has an inter interest associated with it. It's yes, it's going to have an interest associated with if we do bonding, it's going to be a taxable bond because of the nature of what we're doing for that. Um, if it's in the general fund, which the general fund, it would be the muni rate plus, um, I don't have the agreement. I think, I, don't, I can't remember, it's a quarter point. I'd, I'd have to get the, look at the agreement again, but there's um, uh, the muni rate plus a quarter of a point. So you're just trying to recover your, we're, the town is trying to recover its cost. Exactly, exactly. That's and if we go out to bond, it's they're, they're covering the full cost of that if, if, if there's an individual bonding for that. So was the, was the 10 million, do we actually bond the 10 million? Um, no. Right now, the expectation is that we will probably maybe use general fund cash of four to so five. When it says million. funded by the debt. original 10. You oh, did. I'm sorry. The original 10, that was bonded. That was bonded. That was bonded, yes. And that was bonded December, November, December of 21. Wow. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. but I think this is. I'll improved. definitely change the wording on that. Yeah, I, I sort of go back and forth I'll on that one. That. <laughs> we'll blame Diane. Um, <laughs> so, um, property tax collection is still strong at 99.6. At, at Chuck Point, you know, he, he had questions on this one because I, I did take out the comment of highest in the state because technically we're not. So, Actually, the percentage I don't think was necessarily a oh, what, comment for the highlights, but but something. I mean, I mean, at least we'd now have the property tax in there. And yes, if there's nothing else that we want to say, I, I mean, it, it it's strong and just basically got collected. At consistent, yeah. Whatever, it is what it is. Right? Yeah. There is only one town in the whole state that's a hundred percent. And that's because they sell their liens the minute that ground list that levy comes out. So they they get um, they sell the whole thing day one. So they get a hundred percent. So that's the only reason they're a hundred. But but then we have a couple other towns, Darien and that, that are like 99.8.7, 99.7. So we've been saying all along that we're the best, and we really and really aren't. But well, I have. Could I, could I just it's close. It's close, but like you really would have to look town to town on how they do it. Some towns, you know, choose to sell their liens. That brings it up more. Some towns uh, choose to suspend all their personal property and real estate, uh, personal property and car tax. That brings your rate up because they're two of the most difficult taxes. The house isn't going anywhere. So it depends on what you do from your collection. We have ours out collection agency with the cars. We, you know, we go down the route. So. It's tough to say you're not really because you really got to look matter. at the at what what are you doing to collect those taxes doesn't and what matter. your town is. Yeah, so that's it. But I I think it's good you put it in there. Um, our favorite topic leases in '87. So that went into effect. Um, we gathered all the leases that we had. We went the um, auditors went through for us that what ones would actually come under '87. We had about five or six. I forget offhand. Yes, five or six that ended up being uh, leases that needed to come under this uh, Gatsby rule. So you'll see on that schedule, the opening balance because restatement, but it's a restatement based on Gatsby 87 um, for the opening balances of July 1st. Um, we had the opening balance of 1.8. These are now in what our capital assets. Um, they will be recorded as that in our capital assets going forward. And um, we had an ending balance of, I think, um, was it... Uh, one eight to uh, it's two thousand more. We had one lease come on during the year, the fiscal right. year. So that so then we had an ending balance. So the leases are all in; they're on our books um, as required by Gasby. And this has been three years, three four years in the works trying to get this in place. COVID obviously put a um, but push that implementation of this Gasby. With hindsight, uh, Joe, we did we really have to do anything? I mean, it's so de minimis. Well, the, the 1.8 million, I mean, there, there are two different pieces to be able to sort. So there's stuff that impacts yeah, the general funds and the materiality is different. So you might. 1.8 million. You might. Joe, it's hard, hard to hear you, Joe. <laughs> All right. I don't know where my mic is. Um, yeah, so 1.8 million is a big enough number that it should be recorded. Say it again. I said. The amount is a big enough amount that it should be recorded. The two thousand dollar change from current year that one we could have passed on recording that, but the restatement for capital assets and that type of thing it was a large enough amount to implement it. Um, it was. Yes. Based on what? Well, it's a million dollars, right? It's a million dollars of one point eight million dollars of. Yeah, there was one point. I mean, I'm saying, I'm saying we just could have recorded it from 2023 to 2022 forward, and no restatements or anything, right? Standard I mean, requires the restatement. Pardon me? Standard requires a restatement. You can't just start it. It's the, but it's such a de minimis amount. If it's a material, it's a material. It's like nothing. Mm -hmm. We have like one piece. We didn't evaluate it to be immaterial. Pardon me? Our evaluation is it's not immaterial. It's not immaterial. It's it's probably below your materiality testing limit, right? What's your materiality testing limit? It depends on the fund. There's multiple materialities. So what's your lowest?
the, the lowest would be in the business type, which is not really relevant. Yeah, but I mean, it's 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 not. I mean, it's not that important in, at this point in the sense that we we did it. But had we sort of stepped back in the beginning and said we well, only had a couple of leases, right? How many do we have in total? Six, five six, or six. Five or six. One one that's of any significance, right? School the uh, board of ed leases. I mean, really, most police department. I mean, there's there's several, but one big one. Uh, I I just I don't have the schedule yeah, in front of yeah. me, but yeah. okay. Well, it's more towards the standards asking for it and the implementation of it. So, um, no, I'm just saying that we could have just done it going forward and, you know, forgot, would, forgot the others. It doesn't matter at this point, it's done. So, no, and I, I would also worry about GFOA then saying we didn't do, we didn't implement the standard and then we'd get a finding on our GFOA report. Get a what? Would, our, our, when we file this with GFOA, the government, we may get a, a note in next year going that we didn't follow the standard of implementing it. Yeah. Well, okay. Okay. That's, that's what, you know. Yeah. We're trying to balance both sides of it. Yeah, and I'm just saying, so, so, but anyway, it's, it is what it is. Um, yeah, every one of your towns implemented it, Joe? It, it, at least, yeah, except, except for the very smallest towns. I have a town that has a $1 million budget. They're, they're the only one that didn't have any leases that met the criteria. Right. But every other client has this. At least on the lessee side. Okay. All right. Um, on the debt, as I said, we uh, we went out to bond twenty million, yeah. twenty or 25? twenty five, twenty five million, December twenty one. So this is the net effect of the activity of the additional debt minus uh, what came off. <clears throat> one of the questions I had, you know, in the earlier drafts was, was there was a schedule where. Um, we had like 25, it was it maybe it was years or projects where we bonded and we never spent um, every item, every entry for what we spent was less than we bonded. Um, is it the, un, the committed? Yeah. Authorized, yeah. but not. Uh, yeah. So, why was that when you have. So, a whole the, listing of projects. Yeah. Yes. So, I actually reached myself and Bond Council probably a couple of months ago. We're looking into that. We, right. When I noticed. The listing from the 21 um, audit, right. I went through um, and did a full analysis of our capital projects to see what the balances were on everything and what is valid anymore because of the 18 month rule. Right. Of, so um, we're working through cleaning up um, a lot of those projects that have authorizations that are no longer valid because of the age. So, so was that 20 years or was that 20 projects? No. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Schedule itself. Was that years or projects? They were projects. Projects. They were projects. So how could we have 20, let's say the number was 20 projects, which we bonded, and we never, we never, oh, we always underspent. They weren't all bonded, no. So that listing, and I, I'm sorry that I can't, do you have the page? Oh, Thank you. So that listing, and I just want to make sure I'm not speaking out of turn here. Um, Where is that? Where is that? Then the financials? Page 58 Somewhere. on the AFRS. Page 15? 58. 58. 58. Yes. Is that what you're saying? So this schedule, if this is the one you're, is this the one you're talking about? I think like, so, yeah. So these are projects yeah. that um, have the original authorization, have the expenditures, and they have an authorization left. It doesn't mean that we have the mon money because um, the balance is what's left to be spent. So you'd have to look at two different things. Here's the authorization. Then there's the second part, which I had to do the analysis on to say, out of the authoriza authorization, what did we actually bond against those projects to make sure, did we cover the expenditures on it? And then what was left? So uh, in doing that analysis, I had reached out to bond council to say, some of these we need to start closing down, which I'm working on DPW with to get a confirmation to say these projects are done. So then I can say who had enough, um, who was bonded and who was not, and then close down the authorization. So this list would decrease. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I could be wrong. I have no idea. But the, um, the first item, Jellif Mill Road Bridge, I mean, that, is that, that must be pretty old, right? I could uh, be wrong on that. That could be... Don't remember the year offhand. I it's not like this year, right? Oh no, 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 no. Yeah. As you can see, when we the projects, uh, we we code everything by project code, so we know. Yeah. So you can see some of these um, years on some of these items. Yeah. So I'm just it's it's less of an accounting question than it is a control question. Yes, and that's why when I read earlier last year when I was going through the 21 financials, um, I saw this list and I'm like, this is huge. 
So um, that's why I reached out to bond council right away. They gave me the, um, there's two different documents they have to use and that will start coming before the boards uh, after budget, after audit, so that we can start closing these down for next year's audit. So when you have a um, two, two, 2018 track and field rebuild, which um, it was be interesting that we had a long discussion back then about whether this was a private partnership, but that's, this was probably something different. But so who, take any one of these, doesn't matter which one, the that's SACS true. renovation. I mean, so that comes forward from the Board of Education. There's the, so where does that first column come from? Where's the second column come from? The first column is in the year, the budget year that they're requesting um, we break out our needs from the projects on the funding source. So these were authorized projects through the bonding process. So there was an actual authorization put forward. So someone through. bonded eighteen million right. six hundred thousand. Um, not we didn't always we we bond in arrears. So although the dollar amount may say you know three point seven million, we may not have borrowed that amount. So I, I would need to okay. go back to my schedule because that's what I needed to make sure. Did did we cover the expenses? Because that's the next column, and based on that one. Uh, if we cover the expenses and we bonded enough and the project's done, I need to go like on this first one. If this project's done or it's not moving forward, I need to come in front of the appropriate bodies to say, I, ne I need to deauthorize this project right. and can, get rid of the 400. Can, can anybody still spend money against all these? They technically can if they have the authorization in place. Like The authorization, are, for example, that project that Related, related to that project they can't spend it for something else so no, but for that project i mean even though it's a 2018 track and field project they could they could still spend 125 they, could, they have the authorization to do that yeah. and that's why i want to that's reaching out to the different uh areas that these yeah. projects come under and say please let me know these are closed and then i put it in front of the so for, for financial statement purposes you know this, this page is fine okay i think we separately after this meeting want to get want to spend a little time on this because you know Never in my life have I seen 20 projects that have been I've never seen it either. bonded. No, not bonded. You know, 20 people asking for something to be, you know, I want to spend X million dollars building a plant and having doing that 20 times and every single one of them coming in less than, you know, what was budgeted. It just defies logic to me, unless the budget process is wrong. Um, some of them are in relation to, and I, I can't speak to the projects at the no, time, I see, but yeah. for me, you know, there's a contingency they obviously build in, usually sometimes 20% contingency they build into the project. Um, or if they find, you know, once they get into it, cause they go out to bid, they get a, they get a feel for what it is. They get the authorization and they'll only spend what they have, what they need, um, at that point when their, their bids come in. But like the police station renovation, it's a $500,000 I mean that clearly had to be a guesstimate if they only if they only use 184. I mean it couldn't be that far off. It been just the study. If it was your own but if it was your own money, if you were like or like me, if I was, you know, you wouldn't be, you know. So anyway, we I I think we should take this offline. Oh no, definitely. Yeah. And I'm I definitely yeah. this was one of the things I zeroed in when I saw the financial stew yeah. This is a lot of authorization still open and some of it. You know, you may not be able to bond for anymore if we if we yeah. needed to. So. Well, I'm less concerned about them being open than I am about the. It opens one question. That's and that's a good question. Is it just trying to understand the process that could could lead to such a difference between the authorization and the expenditures, and and the fact that it's still open, and the fact that you could still spend against. It. Oh yeah, but no, and that's what uh, Diane and I had been talking earlier um, at the end of last year in processes that we wanna get in place. And one of them is at the end of every year with the projects that are approved, we send it out to the appropriate bodies going, is this project done? And then we start the paperwork right away to get it closed out and or bonded at that point. Yeah. Um, so we do wanna change this process from to condense this, um, this yeah. open list. So it wasn't done before. No, no. So this-, this I mean, the wave in the elevator and bathroom must be in by now, right? I would think so. No. <laughs> no. No. This is well. This is Tucker. They are not in yet. Tiger's on the line. He right. can answer some of these questions. But that that project is underway right now. Yeah. That 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 money was just authorized uh, about seven months ago. 2018 project. No. 2018 started the design, and then uh, the actual construction just started. It was a long process through the town council and the board of finance. They wanted a plan for waving as to how we were going to 
actually utilize Waveney. So we wound up having to hire a consultant, do other things. Now we've, now we've got a wedding coordinator, we've got a website, we've got a big plan going forward. So now they felt comfortable with spending the money and uh, they finally authorized phase two and phase three of the project. And um, it's underway right now. So is we gonna, that, all right, I'll just, I'll just leave it there. Yeah, <laughs> I was just wondering whether. <laughs> And then COVID put a lot of them behind in a lot of projects. Okay. Okay. Is the bridge done? Sorry? Is the bridge done? Which Jell bridge? Jellif Mill. Jellif Mill. Jellif Mill is done, except for the fact that we're waiting for the final audit from the DOT. So the project has to remain open until they audit the books and then come back. And usually there's an adjustment up or down in the end um most of the time we're able to receive monies back but if if there was a case of a, a small bust in some of the in one of the lines they uh um we leave the project open until we get that final closure so um what happens to the six four hundred ninety five thousand if it's let's let's say there's no more spending what happens to the four ninety five? if it's done i would come be from the appropriate bodies with the resolution to close this project down and then this authorization goes away but what happens to the four hundred ninety-five thousand balance? If we haven't, if we, I have to see if we actually bonded the full amount, or do we bond to the point of the expenditures? We bond in arrears. We don't bond up front, so it's not that we bonded the three point seven. If we bonded the three point seven, and we were left with four hundred and ninety-five thousand in bonded capital, um, you can use that for another project, or you could uh, another authorized but un uh, bonded project. an authorized but not uh, bonded project, and you can assign it. So then we can you just set up a new new line item so to speak right so we we have like 23 there's a lot of 23 that are not bonded right. because their projects in the work we could say and that's part of what i want to go through here if there's excess bonding that we actually do have to assign it to the current projects open that are done right. so that i'm not bonding them yeah okay, so great. It's, it's a whole big analysis we're doing and working with dpw on too i, I assume the the project amount authorization can modify as things go by the amount under project authorization it's not fixed once oh it is it is it is fixed it's it, an authorization that actually states that dollar amount and you can't go above that that it, is the but it could be authorized at a higher amount oh if, you could come back and that, ask for an additional order. yes sorry you could are, are there a number of them where people do come back and costs are higher than they ask for additional authorization? Um, I haven't seen it yet. Okay, that's fine. So I, I can't say for sure, but I haven't seen it in my analysis right now. But uh, I'll take, you know. Okay. That might be a good question, though, because I think Ed's question is maybe pertinent in the sense, as you look at this during the year, the project authorization, you know, which is 77,941, is that, was that the original amount or was there, was that, the aggregation of the original plus an additional authorization which is why they were so close yeah so that first column if the, i just it was that the original authorization yes and or was it um or was it the aggregate of an original authorization plus a step up in authorization this would well, most, sorry that's fine we don't spend any more time on it now it's fine and if we if we haven't come back uh for, for additional monies uh, very often, if at all, I can remember. Um, and if they if we do come back for an additional monies, uh, it's usually written into a separate account because it comes from a different year. It doesn't get added to the account that we had. So it would, it would look as a separate authorization and a se separate account number for us to separate from the original from the next. And it's um, the... Uh, I, we haven't come back for monies that I can remember uh, for anything. This year, I'm asking for additional monies in the budget for work at Irwin Barn and for the Parks Garage for projects that uh, that we need. But that would be a separate appropriation and a separate account. But in the past, we haven't gone. We what we've gotten is what we've used. Okay. Let's uh, push through it. Okay, yeah. um, income from investments uh, will decrease by 1.2. Um, that's a net effect in regards to the uh, gain or loss on unreal, unrealized losses that we actually had. We had unrealized gains the year before. 
So there are investments that um, we have fixed income, uh, CDs, things like that. So the town in invests in some, what I would call longer term investments. Exactly. Yes. And they're held, they're, they will be held. They to, will be held to maturity. maturity. But, and, and Joe, you say that the, the town can't say that? I can't audit that. That's that's just an assumption. So no, you can't put that in the audit report. Can't put it in the body of the MDNA. No, because I, I, I that that's just a statement. So it's, it's a town could change their mind tomorrow. It's not something I can audit. So I, I have a question on that, Joe. Hi, th this is Andrew Brooks, the the treasurer. And unfortunately, I'm just receiving now the latest versions of all the materials, so I'm not exactly sure what page we're on. But I, I wasn't, I didn't. I Andrew, wasn't the M MDNA, 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 page one, page one. Okay. So, um, so, 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 Joe, just so I understand, because the concept of income and capital gains or losses are two very different things, as you know from I know like a personal tax perspective, right? Um, I, I understand municipalities may, may be a little bit different, but it seems like we're commingling. Um, the concept of income received, which is a positive number because we're receiving a certain interest and dividend on these investments, at least for the general fund investments. I can't speak for the pension and what their trading strategy is if they're selling securities at a loss. But it, it, I, I guess calling a, an unrealized gain or loss as income uh, to, to the town or income loss to the town seems like we're commingling concepts. So I, I'm hopeful that we can find a way to, to articulate this in a way that's compliant with the requirement with the accounting rules, but also is clear so that folks don't get the wrong idea that we had a loss, that we realized a, a massive loss this year. Get some discussion. Yeah, I, I know that we, we've had some discussions on this, right? And, and I know that um, somewhere in exhibit what is it exhibit d is that what it is can we break it out on b or rsi shows it. it's disclosed in the audit separately so from no you got to get closer to the mic or something exhibit d yeah exhibit d right of the of the document page 39 okay if if you look at that right it breaks it breaks out things into two pieces and it says Income from investments, 200000 And then right below that, it says net change in fair value minus 992. And the net of that, I think, is what shows up on that highlights page that we just looked at, right? So I, th I think the point that we've been talking about is, you know, the first question we had is how could we have a loss? And we finally, you know, at least I'll speak for myself, you know, finally understood the the mark to market loss, and and that needs to be booked. So so the question, and, and it seems to be mixed in the same line. So it seems to me as though if we if we could break out throughout the financials these two separate lines, as opposed to just combining them, it would make things a whole lot easier to understand, and and maybe explain easily in the in the MDNA. Um, and so that was just just a question, you know, as to whether that might make sense in to make it clearer um, and easier to explain. And in any case, we'd have to change, you know, like the caption. I mean, we can't call it things income when they're losses. So get in the word loss, but that's that's a separate yeah, line. We, yeah, we got the. We uh, but but the, that's a question, Joe. Is there anything that would prohibit? From breaking that out, if if Ann thought it was appropriate to break that out into the two lines rather than net them into the one line, I thought there was a Gasby rule on it right. um, with regard to the state with the statements of how it's recorded. I think it was if a, a statement of changes in that. Well, if it, if it is, I, I would think that that's yes, a bad a, rule. I mean, I don't know. That's that's a Gasby statement as opposed to the MDNA, right? Um. So there's two places. There's the balance the the income, whatever the page 39, but what I call the income statement, the 30, 36, right? Page 36 would be like one place, the equivalent of like the income statement where it says, you know, net investment loss from investments about halfway down. And then on the MDNA, 
those are two places I know. And then there could be, you know, some other stuff in the back with all these other well, yeah, the schedules the that exist. The we're looking at is for all the fund, it's government wide. And then further down, you'll see where the main component of that under the general fund is, which is on the RSI one schedule that shows that you have, um, you know, we have interest on interest on investments. Um, we were under budget by 689,000. Where are you looking I'm at? On page 103, uh, 103. RSI1. This is uh, just general fund area, so you can see where the bulk of this um, activity is. So, so on the top, it'll say income from investments. So you'll see we budgeted 850, and due to the market conditions, we brought in. Um, 160,000, but that's market conditions on, on the investments that we did have. Then the net change on fair value, we don't budget that number year to year. And that's our investment. But see, this is years. another place where it's broken out nicely. This is just on, yeah, this is just on, what we have to try and balance between the two is we have MDNA under GFOA guidelines that they're trying to stop us as entities, putting it in multiple places. And in, in one of their documents, it actually says, please refrain from saying what you already have in your books and in your financial statements. So we're trying to balance that without jeopardizing how we present the document in the best way possible. So I, I hear you saying that, but, but I don't think this is a case where you're duplicating stuff. I think I, I would interpret what they were saying, just don't repeat the table don't, don't say the same thing four over times over. Yeah. well because i got into it in, in the budgetary highlights for the general fund i detail out the two reasons why in that versus but the, but, but, but i think one number. one suggestion would be is now we've looked at two places where it is broken out in the financials because it's required in a certain way so what i bet the financials is not broken out in page 30 36 it's not broken out because it's a different it's a different schedule i'd have to go schedule but that schedule. is the finance i may look at the financials as the financials and then you got the mdna and you got the transmittal right and and the only thing that's audited is the financials okay i think and and meanwhile i just think it'd be a lot easier if you considered breaking it out into two lines and then you could talk to them. right right now it's just not clear like I've said, and like Andrew said, and well, I think I, anybody that's read it has said that. I'll look into more in regards to the the, the guidelines that we have and anything that might change it. Um, I was trying to, because the board had asked me to keep things in the similar manner. So is there somebody that could send that the fact that we approved it last year, that that format was still acceptable? Joe, this Joe year. Could, so I can look into it. Joe, could you send to me these so-called yeah. guidelines that everybody lives by with respect to the MDNA? Yeah. So it's in, it's part of Gatsby 34, but yes. I, I, I don't have a subscription to the Gatsby's. <laughs> yep, I can resend it. I think we I, I just don't have talked about it a couple of years ago, but yeah, the, the MDNA is a maximum standard. It's opposite. You can only talk about so it's what not the you can talk about. There's, there's Joe, get Joe, get a little closer to the microphone. I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm as close as I can get. Well then, speak clear, because like because you're saying, just tell me again, what it is that the Gasby says. thirty four, what you just said it says. The standard is written that the MDNA can only include the things that are listed in Gasby thirty four. We can send you that. So you you're limited to what management is, or the town management is limited to what they can say in the MDNA. Yes. Normally the MDNA prescribes certain minimum things you have to say. It, this is the opposite. It allows you to say what you want to say. Because it says management discussion and analysis. So it's hard for us to understand how there could be a rule that says we can't talk about something if management feels it's important to communicate the financial statements in the discussion analysis. Right. And every company that's a public company, which I realize the town's not, follows the rule of, you know, you got to say what com what it is that communicates to the public. But you're saying you have a standard that says, that, you know, whether it's important or not, if it's not in the standard, we can't say it. it. It lists the categories that you have to have and nothing else. Yes, I will send it to you. Right. It tells you what you need, but it doesn't tell you but the what you might be able to put on top of that. 
But no, as Joe was saying, it tells you what you can have in it, and that's it. It's it's a reverse of FASB. So GASB is a little bit different in that in that capacity. And the, the oh, um, yeah, let's. I, I mean, I let us read it, but I I I I've heard that from you, and I just heard it from Ann, and and I I, I just <laughs> hard to believe. It's hard to believe to be quite <laughs> true with you. Yeah, yeah I, I remember this in the past. I thought it said, here are things you must include. Right. You may include others as well, but at a minimum, you include yeah. these. That's what, I, And that's kind of the way it is everywhere. Right? right. I mean, there are certain rules in the public world, too, where you got to include certain things. Okay, so. so. So going back to this particular item we're talking about, we can't, you're telling us we cannot expand it? If we're talking about the financials, if we could expand it on B, if that's the question. So we could put in two lines rather than one throughout the financials. Yes, on B, because I think that's the only place it's not, or maybe in the MDNA it's not, but we could can add that line with the same breakout that's in the back. It's in the exhibit D or whatever it is. It's correct. Yeah, okay. So I mean you you can D. think about that, but I would I would strongly suggest that you do that. And then the and word, I don't think we have word, to. I don't think for something like that we have to hold it up no. to send it to the to the town council. I just think yeah. there'll be, you know, these are some things we could do next week while the town council is reviewing. I mean, these are these are minor things, relatively speaking. You know. Yeah, and then we could just look at it and say fun. Yeah, but think about that, and then that that could then make it easier for your explanation uh, in the MDNA. I think. And if you broke it out into two lines on this summary, what's it called? Changes in that position on page 22 also, then that would allow you, you know, to talk about it easier, I think. Well, we'll yeah, we should, we'll discuss we'll it discuss offline. It then. So break it out in two lines writers. everywhere yeah, throughout, we'll right? And then you could talk about it better. Okay. Okay. I think that'd be good. Um, that Andrew, does that make sense? Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that approach, Chuck, of breaking it out into the two line income from investments and then the uh, change in fair value just to, you know, have that delineation. But I think as well in the MDA on page 18 from the draft that I'm looking at, I would want that explanation versus just a overarching number of 1.2 million uh, like I, I think it would be helpful to provide some context and if there is an ability to explain um you know that that again interest rates impact the value the underlying value of these the market value of these investments and on june 30th of 2022 rates were in an uptrend so of course it's going to cause an unrealized loss so I, I just think that context needs to be clear thank you if we it, just to just to Andrew to let you know, in breaking out that line, it's one point two million of unrealized gains, and it's actually one point three in unrealized gains as a government wide, with a realized of eighty one thousand year over year. So this number would increase. It, it's a net you mean of year, year over year, yeah. Yeah. So the the, the mm -hmm. number is one point two year over two. year net. To break it out, it's going to be a one point three um, unrealized loss with a uh, realized gain of eighty one. Difference, yeah. Mm -hmm. 81 that it's offset by 81 so to bring it down same, to the 1.2 it's the same kind of issue that we're going to talk about with pensions yeah you know so yeah the, the, the year so essentially I, I, so so my only ask is that in the mda instead of just showing that overall number or if you include that overall number i would i think we should also then show all those underlying numbers of what the realized gain was what the unrealized loss was you know what the actual income from investments were and then for the unrealized loss, just explain why there was an unrealized loss. It wasn't, um, you know, a factor of someone making a mistake or making a bad investment decision. It's a, a, it's just a factor of interest rate fluctuations and securities that are heavily sensitive to interest rate fluctuations. That's what I said in where the unrealized loss of investments at fair value. So it's not a matter of who invested, how, and a mistake or anything like that. We're saying be and because of fair value, and anyone could understand that going through COVID and, and the interest rates that, and how and the that's... market was, that that would be an effect on these investments because you know, prior to that, they were gains. And um, the interest rate, as you know, has been significantly lower market money market rates were at 0.35. So 
this as saying is fair value is not pointing it to say that there's an issue with decision making. It's what it was at that point in time. We could have a swing the other way now come in 22 because our interest rates are going up a lot. We're now our money market goes from a 0.35 to a 4.1. So we're going to have those swings again next year, but hopefully to the good. Yeah. So it's not bad decision making. It's just the, the effect of the market. Market. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, and, and I agree with all that. I just think there's opportunity for us to provide that context because I don't think the lay reader will understand what fair value means. So, so that's why I think providing more context here would would help explain it to the lay reader, to the public that might pick this up and want to understand what what is going on. I think the, um, you know, I think the philosoph philosophical thinking on the part of the management discussion analysis. I haven't discuss this with Andrew or the other committee members, but you know that this document, which is the MDNA, if you just read this, you really, you really understand everything else. And if you want to read the financial statements and so on, you can go ahead and do that. But this this communicates to the 18,000 employee people in town. And and I just would and and <clears throat> I'm trying to say it's critical because I realize it comes at the end after we do everything else. But the place we want to get this to, we've been working on this for a number of years, is where it communicates and stands on its own. And right now, I don't think it communicates or stands on its own. So, and we're not going to get it to where we where we would love it to be this year. I mean, it's just not going to happen. We just don't have enough time. And it's, and it's a continuing to be a big project. We made a lot of progress over the last couple of years. So I think that's the philosophy. And, and we we don't subscribe to the idea but there's somebody out there with some rules that says you can't say this. Like, you know, that can't be the rule, but if it is the rule, I'll work on it for the rest of my life to change that because that's just <laughs> totally absurd for somebody to tell me I can't say something in my management discussion analysis. And so the next line, for example, on education expense, you know, if you just read that cold, that that's hard to, okay, education expense went up 5 million due to an increase in pension expense, partially offset by a decrease in employer contribution. I'm not sure, you know, I, I'm not sure that communicates. If, you know, if you don't know anything else, what does that say? And, and that's all, you know, it, it, we're well, not- I was trying, you know, this board committee had asked me to try and keep things as similar as possible. So as, I was trying to- Similar or simple? simple. Similar. Similar. similar, which, you know, for me, my yeah. experience, this is a very, this is a huge MDNA I've never seen to this level. Yeah. So I'm trying to keep it to that level while That's... trying to balance the GFOA. I can certainly break this out. We try and discuss it further down, but I can, you know. Well, I'm not sure, even sure you have to break it out. I'm just not sure. And you know, it's just not a criticism. No, but this, I'm trying this, to understand what, what. Yeah, this is, this is us. We're just trying to get, this is us. This is not you. I'm just trying to say that, you know, it's, and we could go around the room and ask eight the 10 people in the room what do they think that says and i bet you we come up with at least two or three different versions of what it says and and i think so when partially offset by a decrease in board of education employee contribution the, the health benefits right but well, what's offset the 6.8 the increase in pension expense so the net it's increased by 6.8, and it's primarily due to the increase in, in pension expense. How much is the which pension? Is also, how much is the pension expense increase? Um, I would say four, uh, four million or so, because I'm trying to think. The, for, for education, nine, the health care increased about 2.7. If I'm, I'm talking, I'd have to confirm. Yeah. I think the, the health was 2.7. Um, their expense, so the net of that, so it'd be about four million. So we have four million there. We have. Seven million back between three departments. You're looking at the year over year difference. That's what the so well, that's what, part of the that's what part this of the MDNA is, requires that we have a year over year on a government wide, yeah. and then we have a year based on just the year activity for the general for the, the general the government. Pension expense for the year changed by about six million, right? No, it, it changed year over year. Year over year the, by in the year, year over year by million. six million. Year over year was six million. Yeah. Yeah. So it's six million that we're talking about divvying up between everybody. It's six million additional. Not on a budgetary basis, but on a year-over-year -year comparison. Th this that's is the difference. This, this is dealing basically with government-wide. Government-wide year-over-year. Yeah. Okay, and that's about six or seven million. Six million dollars of pension increase versus last year, this year versus last yeah. year, in total. 
the actual. differential total actual. town actual but not not to our expense not to our expenses on a budgetary basis it's a million dollars in our budget is this talking about budgetary is this, this talking is about this government? is year over year this is a requirement of yeah. the mdna from um on what vehicles. basis because it's a requirement for the schedule that we put a year over year comparison which on if what you basis? see company um, business wide right uh, it's government wide government wide okay which is just, everything it's on page 22 yeah and it's the statement of changes of net position and these are not our budgeted numbers right i'm not talking about budget no but i'm trying to explain the difference of why you, 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 you when you're saying six million dollars swing it, in pension is year over year we only we only had a pension expense of about a million just right. over a million dollars we had one million expense this year right and we had a five million credit last year right so the swing is six million. But it's not a six million swing in our PL from a budgetary basis. But this is this is government wide. This is a government wide. And Joe, is and there I'm, a better I'm way confused. that you can help me explain yeah. this on it? I'm confused. I mean, I if you if you were to look at page 22, if you had a line item called pensions, if you were to break everything into pensions into one line called pensions, right? It would show one million in 22, one million expense, 1.3 million expense in 22. And it would show 5 million credit in 21. And so you'd be explaining the 6 million. And the 6 million gets divvied up between, you know, all the different departments, as well as maybe some of the some of the what administrative is that who's covered in the education in the pension yeah, the non teachers right non teachers let's say so i'm trying to understand that this is this is comparison year over year and it's telling us what were the big swings so we're telling the big swings are the pension from year over year which is 7 well, million do we agree 6 6, six million. million 6 million right okay so we're explaining why that differential between uh, year over year happened, and it's based on that swing, and it's based on the fact that we drew down on their um, their offset with their internal. Sir, let me it's basically it. due to the investment losses, right? Exactly, but that's not something we take on our books from a perspective of well, twenty percent. You do, right, Joe? We we do smoothing. It's a smooth. No, the the actuarials would do the smoothing on whether a gain or a loss on that, as you know, and it's a five year smoothing, I believe. So we are impacted with that level. It's still a million dollars to our PL budgetary basis. From a reporting requirement year over year. My, my only on issue is that if you're saying it's four million in the education pension swing. It's not a PL swing. Yes. The difference year over year, four million. I think that's what you're saying. Not from a budgetary basis. From, from this. Highlights page. If yeah. you were to say how much of that six point eight million is due to pension, right? We said approximately approximately four million. When I have the number, okay. Of let's just four million. That's that's what I'm saying. We're trying to say that's four of the six. So, are you asking me if I understand what you're asking me? You want me to actually put no that you're you're asking I'm for numbers to, to break down that six point eight. First, I'm trying to understand it. All right. So, four. You're saying four four million of the six point eight. Is pension. Um, oh. I have to pull the numbers out Roughly, to actually. But, well, no, I don't. I, 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 let me give me a moment to pull out. But the then, numbers. then what I'm going to, if you go back then to page 20, 23, where we, where we talk about under government activities and we talk about, you know, the reasons for increases in costs. And we go down to the line called public safety, public works and parks and recreation right and but we talk about those a, things not on a we talk about budgetary those, basis none of what i'm talking about is on a budgetary basis it's all like it's all actual right i'm talking no, about i'm a, talking no, about government-wide rsi schedule is our the rsi one is our budgetary but basis. i'm not talking that about has a million dollars of expense in it this is a different schedule this, this does too joe help me does the government-wide financials have $1.3 million of expense for pension in it this year? 
it, it, it has the pension expense. I don't, I don't have numbers in front of me, but conceptually, this is accrual based accounting. So it's it's gonna well full bit. It's it's in the footnote, right? It, the the expense number that's in the footnote is one point three, and that's the full pension expense, right? It's, for the year. For the year. Your actuarial report, right? Right, and and that's and, the expense and is a, a modified accrual. Right, and so that's so. There's we already went through it. It's six million. It's one point three this year. Remember, Joe, we talked about it's five last year credit, right? Right. So the difference is six. We said maybe there's three or four or something for education. If we read this bullet here, it says public safety, public works, parks increased by three million five million and one million respectively so that's a grand total of nine million primarily due to pension so it says primarily due to pension expense on, a, on an accrual basis yeah so the so the accrual. six now is explaining you know four on the education and you know a large part of nine think, here I, I think, yeah, so that that's the problem kind of that I have is is you know the pension what what, what I, I think I'm sorry, I don't I'm not understanding the issue with it as a poster I'm look well that's what I'm trying to understand what the issue is with it I guess the to get back there the 6.8 I guess the better explanation of what makes up the 6.8 are you looking you want exact numbers of what's making that up well, I don't know to about put it exactly. in here. Well, no, I'm trying to understand. But it would what be it a good thing to start with, and then from that you could determine what you want to talk about. Yeah. What makes up the six point eight, and then you could pick out a few things. Well, I was highlighting the main items. That's what, which was the two items that were affecting the board of yeah. ed's um, modified approval. Yeah. I see. None of. Correct me if I'm wrong. The stuff we're talking about in the MDNA, unless it's said otherwise, and the front part of the financials, exhibit A, B, and C, and the footnotes. Forget about all that RSI stuff in, in the back. All that other stuff is basically Gasby Gap, full accrual, no budgetary, no modified accrual, whatever it's called. It's full accrual gap numbers. Right. That we're dealing with, I think. So we don't have to deal with budget, budgetary, and any of that stuff. I'm not understanding what your question is on it because there are two different types of schedules: the modified accrual and the budgetary. So I'm only talking about full accrual, government-wide, audited numbers from schedules A, B, C, and the footnotes. I think that's what I'm trying to talk about. I'm. Not, I'm not talking but about budget. I'm, I'm confused as to what you you're looking for me to put in the MDNA for for what you're looking for. That's what I'm. I think we were just talking about the six. It's, I think Bill pointed out that six point eight million for the board of ed. For the board of ed exactly. and why, and I think the thing was is that it wasn't real clear why. That well, this is a good explanation points. of why. It's two. I two I'll put the dollar amounts in there. It's two components. It's the pension. It's the pension expense from a an accrual basis. I mean, from a from a a uh, public company gap point of view, the MDNA requirements would be to quantify, you know, stuff that you do spike up, right? I think that would be the, so I don't know what it is. And this decrease here. in the contribution was due to the use of the internal service fund reserve. Right. Was so that they mean? budgeted lower. So the board of ed's budget was lower than um, the expected claims, the expected expense. I think it was just about $9 million. Um, so they had it at, at that point, it could have been up to about $5 million in the reserve four or $5 million. So the decision was made to take the budget down, um, of what the board of ed would contribute as their employer contribution to put into the ISF. So we draw down the ISF as opposed to taxing people, they drew down the reserve. So that was the offset. Okay. What I thought basically was that for, for the year of 21, because of COVID, the costs were less no. because people didn't go to the doctor. Well, that, in 21? Yeah, 21. 22, expenses were more because people tended to go 
more to the doctor. Expenses, actually, net expenses uh, came and in. The internal uh, service fund is more or less just, just a, an internal service fund. It, Correct. It's, it's not necessarily the total expense for the for the. The total expense the runs about between, over the years has been 16 to now 17, but there's other components, like you said, but the net claims, things like that, which is what they have to cover. Um, the net claims have been kept keeping stable around 13, 14 million with stop loss. So that's on the internal service fund. But when they when they moved from a um, when they moved into a high deductible plan some years ago, there was some savings in that. And from those savings, they built up a re the reserve built up. So when the budget was decided in uh, to, for 2022, sometime in 21, um, the decision was made to use the reserve to bring down the expenses in the board of ed, the expense, the employer contribution. So it wasn't that the claims changed or increased or decreased. It was a decision, a, budget, a budgetary decision to say, we've got four or five million dollars sitting over here. We're not going to tax people when we have the reserve over reserve over here. So it brought it down to nine million in the board of ed budget and used the reserve. There's a savings there. So you said not tax people? We're not taxing on that because we bought the budget down. Taxing the residents. We're taxing the residents because He's we didn't use the reserve. Them. He's already taxed them. Which you... at, a, at, a, at a previous point, right. yes. Because so the fundamentally what you're doing is you previously collected money from, I'm not being critical, just say you previously collected money from the residents, which is in a reserve, which now you're going to just reduce the expenses. Right, because in the internal service fund, when they went to a high the internal service serving. fund and all that sort of stuff is sort of how we, I'm just sort of how we, I'm just trying, it's just sort of how we bookkeep it. I mean, fundamentally, we kind of collected the money in advance and you know, we have we have a cushion. Well, because they, uh, I, I can't speak to what the decision yeah, is, yeah. Again, but the high deductible plan came in with significant savings. Yeah. Moving to the high deductible plan, um, maybe they weren't aware at that point of what the level of savings were going to be moving to that plan, yeah. Yeah. but there was significant but savings. Conceptually, maybe I'm wrong. I had understood was that the healthcare costs, particularly on the Board of Education side, were lower in 21. It incurred. They're lower incurred costs because people didn't go to the doctor. I didn't. I didn't see that in the. And then, just and looking then, at net claims. And the expectation that was change. is that more people would go to the doctors in twenty two, yeah. and therefore you needed more money, and that's the reason that. That's you, what we were told. We were, that's what you had all we were those, told all those switches back and forth. N yeah, net cl a net claims stayed ago. pretty much stagnant with My misunderstanding. Half a million to a million net claims. What okay. changed was your stop loss premium. Um, what were the other things that went up? Stop loss, administrative. administrative expense, but the stop loss premium because there was significant stop loss uh, usage, unfortunately, um, that's increased nearly a million dollars over two years. Right now, estimated until the final numbers come in. So that's what was shifting the dial. The claims have been kept somewhat uh, within that five hundred to a million dollar difference between thirteen and fourteen million because of the stop loss claims. Last year, we had six sixteen. In 22, we had $16 million in gross claims. We had $3 million that's in stop loss reimbursement. In 22, because we had- That's stop, what we're dealing with, 22. Right, but that's what I'm trying to explain. We had 16 million in claims, but we had stop loss of 3 million against that to bring it down to 13 change. So it wasn't an increase in claims that caused this. It was a decrease in the employer contribution to use the reserve. All right, can I, can I take a shot and give it a little bit of clarity? So if you look at Exhibit G or, or Exhibit E, it's showing a two, two million 357 loss in the internal service fund. For government-wide purposes, that's 100% education. So that drives education expense up by that mm -hmm. 0.357. So that's what the MDNA is saying is because if there's a loss, it drives up the expense. If there's a positive operations, it'll reduce the expense. But this gets consolidated that 100% against education. So even though it wasn't funded in the budget, on a government-wide basis, the expenses are up to 2.3. So, so that, that's the connection between that loss and, and education going up due to that loss. So is, is part of this... So did healthcare costs go? Is that part of the increase of six point eight? 
Yes, that that's the four million, and this would be the two point four million of that is that. And again, it it's just because the fund has a loss, even if expenses are the same. Their budget was lower by X, but it generates a loss. The loss gets pushed back on the government wide statements as an expense of the Board of Education. So that would be part of the six, the four, and and that would be the drivers for why education is up. Right. And I think the comment is, is that I'm not so sure that this wording says that. It seems to say kind of the opposite. That's a thing. The, so you, so the, the, uh, this wording descriptive, Joe, what you just said? Is it, it's, it's in, the, in the first part? Paid in education, let's say. Increase in pension and yeah, no, I, I, I would spin it back to what I said, and, and it basically it's the decrease was an indirect, but but it's an increase in in, in expense in a sense. So, it, or and if, Joe, if I'm correct, that's the it's a in in essence, it's somewhat of a net net too, because on if you're looking governmental wide. The, you have the increase because it's a loss in the internal yeah, service fund, the, but you have somewhat of the offset in in uh, the general fund because the budget was lower. So maybe my wording is confusing in that regard because I'm looking at it as government wide. They should net somewhat net between what the general uh, the general fund decrease with the use of the fund balance versus that increase in the internal service fund. So that's a good point there that you brought up that I should clear the wording that way. So it's right, because then it at least maps to the financial and I don't know, if, I don't know if the overall budget started higher, but that would be the other offset on that one. Yeah. We normally say just the Board of Ed adopted budget was higher by X yeah. and, and then that would explain it. So to kind of more map it to what the numbers that we can I don't think we want to, I, you know, we could take the rest of it offline. We probably spent more yeah. time on it than, than healthy, but, you know, I don't think um, anybody's sort of saying what's here. We're just saying it's not descriptive enough. And, and as a model, just going forward, using this as an example, and then this whole idea of the, um, whatever we call it, the, um, the fun, I forget the name of it, um, which was described back here somewhere. You know the internal service fund. Um, you know, I, I just, I just think people have difficulty, you know, reading this. I mean, I mean, just simply, we put away too much last year and we freed it up. I mean, you know, those wouldn't be the word you would use, but you know, to describe that when you're writing things of this nature. Well, I'm just because I'm looking at last year's, and it's similar to last year's description. So I'm trying to keep it similar to like the investment yeah, increase. Can, can I seven. just? Can I just well, make no, can a, I just finish Jeff, for a minute second? Can I just finish my statement? Yeah. So it, last year we had investment income from investment decrease 726,000 yeah. period. There was no description. There was nothing about it. Yeah. This committee asked me to try and keep it as similar and not change things. I tried to do what this committee is asking yeah. under the presumption that the wording that was approved last year would roll forward, but I'm certainly open to making changes. Yeah, no, no, I, I think, I'm trying to do what was asked. Yeah, no, I think uh, if, if, if that's what we ask, I think what we intended to say is we didn't want to diminish or decrease the MDA. We want to actually contribute, you know, it's been a work in progress over a number of years to continue to improve it, you know, and to make it more descriptive. And that's all we're trying to do. So we're not okay. trying okay. to be critical of what we have or anything of that nature. We're just struggling with it. And there's, you know, a little bit of it is that a little bit of it is sort of some lack of knowledge, a little bit of it is different, different funds, a little bit of complication. And so as a model, we're just trying to develop it going forward. So and we're not going to get there this year. We're, you know, we'll make some progress and next year we'll improve upon it a little bit. And so, um, yeah. Bill, Bill, so, it's Andrew, just, just to quickly add on that. So I actually wasn't invited to participate in this process last year. So that's why a lot of the edits that I've been providing over the past week were because I wasn't engaged last year. This was before I think Ann was here. I think when Linda 
was uh was managing this so so i think that also is a trigger for some of the changes and obviously with the changes in interest rates and having an unrealized loss for the first time in a long time i think that does necessitate further expansion of the explanation compared to just keeping it really brief like it was done last year so i think that the, those are additional reasons why this year might be a little different than last year yeah it's a good point Andrew, i just want to yeah Dialta, Dandre, i just want to make sure because when I, I went through last year, I went through to look at the process and everything and what was asked to be done, you know, yes. clean up balance sheets, all this thing, or actually 2020 as far back, trying to clean up balance sheets that was asked at that point by the auditors and by this committee, yeah. obviously, it, it, uh, because probably COVID, it didn't get done. But Andrew, in going through things, I saw your name and all the emails going out with some of the, the statements going out the door. Right. So Invited that's why I assumed you, you knew. And that's why we were- uh, In 2021? Out. No, I won't get it. We can I talk have no emails that. from 2021. In 2020, I provided feedback over the phone to Lunda. There, there weren't. I didn't send written feedback to to Lunda in 2020. I went back and looked myself, and so per perhaps you can show me these these emails. Well, I, that think, never yeah, made I think you know. Really, all we're trying to do is that we're we're not trying to be critical of anybody. We're just trying to get a uh, something that communicates that that's our job. And and it's, there's nothing we can do about yesterday. Nothing we can do about last year. Or, Certainly, twenty-one or twenty-two or nineteen. We only can do it about tomorrow and, and next year. And that's that's really all we're trying to do. Yeah, no, you know? and understand. And we're not going to. We're not going to. We're not going to, we're not going to be able to. None of us are going to be able to redraft this to make it perfect. If we can even define what perfect is, we're just trying to improve it. That's all. As we go forward. No, it's just to your point about the what was written in the MDNA, like last year, this comment about. Income from investments decreased 726,000, period. So that's another example where, you know, at least Anne has tried to add a little bit more information as succinctly as possible in the highlights. So. I think what we're trying to get to yeah. is, I think, you know, let me just try to say it. I, I mean, seriously, we're not, this is it's unfortunate that on the government rule, all the stuff has to be in. in public right I mean okay. we're just trying to work on making this a little bit better and um I apologize if we weren't smart enough to know last year what questions to ask because that's probably what happened okay this year we're a little bit smarter and what we're trying to get is the town and I realize you you know you guys weren't there last year to the point where you give us a draft which is doesn't require any comment so we're just talking about how we can do that unfortunately we have to do that in a meeting like this you know that's just yeah. the way life is and so, um, but we're, ju we're just, so we're just trying to get to the next level of, and so when you see something where it says education expenses increased um, primarily because of pension expenses, you know, I think the more we can explain about that, the better off we are because the different people will interpret that different way, right? When you read that, some people say, oh my goodness, pension expenses are going up a lot. So the more texture we can put around that where people could understand it. Not you. I don't mean. I mean the people who could presumably, if anybody reads this, the people who are going to read this, that would be helpful. You know, and uh, and I realize that with the amount of volume here, there's probably a good case could be made for a lot of people who don't read it. But that that doesn't mean that if you're going to write a book, you should write a crummy book because you're not going to sell many copies. You have to write a good book just in case someone reads. You know, no, that's what I'm trying to get to. So let's let's work on it. And um, Andrew, appreciate your comments as well. And um, let's just try to maybe let's why don't we focus at a minimum on the pension and on the investment income at least in those two areas and then uh, maybe there's another area in the mdna i think we can you know you, you leave that up to you and whether you want to take a shot at this before we send it to the town council or we just want to sort of agree amongst ourselves that um you know we'll send it to the town council and just let them know there's some you know, minor tweaks that we're doing or whatever the case may be because they are minor tweaks our classification just just one other comment you know on the in the nbna there is a section for pensions on page 30. page 30. yeah at least it says pensions yes liability whatever but it, it, this could be a place where you just talk about pensions and say you know look you know here's here's the expense last year that a little table maybe that just says you know, it was one man, five man, six man, and then have a little explanation as to why here, and then everything else where you talk about it, it, it 
you know, I just have to make sure it's in the right section only because that section is is going under when it's under uh, general fund and all that. It, it goes down to the year versus the year over year. So I think maybe at the beginning would be where I'd put the year yeah, over year. That's fine. Barbara, that's exactly. Thing okay. Up. Yeah. Okay. Um, Good. All right. In any case, there's if, if if there's one place where you kind of focused on pensions, and then that impacts a lot of things. Right. So if you had one place where you kind of talked about, you know, why pension expenses up seven million, six million, whatever. And then on every cool place, basis. every place sells you say, well, government and could, you know, includes three million for pensions and, you know, public work or whatever is two million, whatever. And, and, and then it's explained somewhere. Um, that, that's all. To me, that would make sense. Just a thought. So what other areas would this committee like to Just refresh my memory on the Board of Education pension for the teachers, the liability and assets are booked at the state. I mean, it's a mm -hmm. state. The state has that in there. And the problem. expense is here? We, on a modified accrual, we'll just make yeah. sure it's on that one. They, they allocate it back. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it's in the government-wide, it's in. Yeah, that's right. what I'm trying to find it. Or do you have it? Now, you the, have to look at it, but, it, the, but the, the expense is, is here. It has to be. Just the liability is there. From an accrual yeah. standpoint, yeah. The other thing is, is that all of the state pension information is a is a year old they are a year behind so it's 2020 yeah. which is they require us to do our absurd. pension every year yeah. kind of absurd so it, but they haven't same still people are, same so, people wrote those gasby things or something so none, of, none, of, <laughs> none of the connecticut teachers pension stuff reflects the bad investment performance that existed in not yet in the period that these financials cover right. <laughs> well i i would think that that would be something we should say do we say that I'm sure you can say what we want. No, I just think that, you know, I think that. Um, a lot worse than what it shows. You know, it's it's a consolidation of the, fundamentally, it's a, conceptually a consolidation of what's happening with the state fund. And I think the reader should, you know, should know that is the, the one year lag. I mean, you might just say that, but you know, maybe that's something we put on a list for next year. Think about yeah. it. We haven't talked to, you mean in the MDNA? We the haven't T discussed PRB. Yeah, with teachers. teachers. Because it's not pension. a required, yeah. It's not a required statement. In I think it muddies the waters given the. Um, I think, topic. you know, I think, um, you know, I guess just the concept of if, if our pension expense is X, but if there's a big decrement in value at the state level, it'll become, it'll go up next year. Because they have to make up their losses somehow, and so you know, forewarning that to the reader would be something you would normally do in financial statements if they weren't government financial statements. So I just just think about that next year. It's probably not all that big, but by next year, hopefully, the market will reverse and you get you know. But those are the types of things we would like you to think about as you go forward, so you, you can really signal to the people where we're going. But what you actually see in here is is these financial statements reflect a big improvement at the state pension. Level. The state because, puts some more money because of the, the investment state. return positive right. back in that yeah. period, which and is then, now reversed. So it's a lot better than it was like the year before. And next year, like you say, it's going to be worse again. Well, they said their fund, well, yeah. currently they said their fund balance was strong that they were going to put some funds into it. That, that's true. We, we haven't seen that's what they say. Okay. Yeah. So I think, I think just on the MDNA, just so we don't have to, you know, Right down on the other. That's the concept we're trying to do. So maybe, mm -hmm. and if you felt there was some value to it, you know, let's assume we send this out pretty much as drafted, unless you want to hold it a little bit. And then over the next week or 10 days, you know, until we get to the 27th, if we want to improve upon this, we can write it, write it and improve upon it. And I don't think the town council would be concerned about that. We can tell them in the meeting. We made some modifications. We could tell them you did it. We looked at it. You know, they'd be sure. fine. Yeah. And conceptually, I think there'll be very few changes to the basic financial state. Right. No, I think that's going to no, be going to be the MDNA. You know, maybe wording that might be tweaked. Maybe. Yeah, it seems. I, I mean, think. the numbers to me when I go through a CAFR, the first thing I do, or an AFR draft report, first thing I do is look yeah. at the RSI one. I, mean, I make sure the general fund because that's a big part of it, and then I go to all the supplemental, the other funds. If I know those numbers tie into my trial balance, then I know the numbers throughout because it's right. all linked. So 
from a numbers perspective, um, that's what I like to do when going through this right. first to make sure the numbers. So I, I did have one other comment on 26. And I think we talked about this. <clears throat> I didn't know if you had any plans to do anything. The below the table where they have the introduction to the discussion for the Board of Education expenses. Yes. Where, where you know, it says it's a difference between original budget and final budget. Yes. Which is really the transfer column. It is, yes. Right, which, and then the discussion is all, is that, but it doesn't deal with the right column at all. So Because the, we were just thinking because of the numbers, it's 0.4% of the budget. So, so I would just change like, the, maybe change the words and say it's, it's, um, I put I well, put a different yeah. statement in there, Sean, and I'm talking with the Board of Ed um, on on that when you address that concern. So are you're okay we with changed, the way it is. Well, we changed it from original hey, budget fine. to final budget, so that so you did you change see where it. it went, and then down below it tells you those major changes because the saving the the numbers that are okay. left are insignificant, like they're 0.4 percent of the budget. So you did change the wording. We changed that wording on that top one. Yeah, no, I reached out to Sean. That's and fine, and then right then away. you felt that the stuff on the right you just didn't need to talk about. Well, because it's so immaterial. That's, that's fine. 4%. So. That's fine. Yeah. yeah, no problem. So should we go we to change the wording? Thank you. Yep. I didn't see that. Yeah, no, we did. Yeah, we did change it. I didn't see it on the changes. Uh, it should have been on the highlight. Yeah, yeah. it should have been on the highlight. Yeah, I just didn't okay. see it. Yes. Sorry. There's been a lot of changes, good. as you know, when okay. going back and forth. Okay. Yeah, I think that that's. Yeah, I want to go. I want to make sure we. Um... Let's talk about the, uh, the audit. status of the audit and and really from Ann's standpoint, you know, and Joe's standpoint, are we done? Are we close to done? Is everybody ready to sign up on everything? everything. I mean, from our perspective, with numbers and everything, at this point, it's it's basically preference on wording. That's where we're at. And unless, Joe, if there's something else I'm missing, I, I think right now it's really wording and just um, agreeing on how that MDNA is going to look. Yeah, that's correct. We have our legal updates. Every, everything is in on our side. So we're just waiting for the, the okay to go ahead and print. So we're ready to go on our side. So, and we did receive a copy of the um, um, letter from the outside council and, and the management. Oh, it's not a package. Management. I sent it as the emails because I wasn't requested to copy it, but yeah. I have a copy from somebody. Oh, he did. You yeah. got it? Okay. And uh, so, Joe, um, you you did what you needed to do from an audit standpoint around unrecorded liabilities, uh, litigation, and you're comfortable with that? Yes. Okay. And then um, the other item we had was um, management representation letter. I have a draft that's you know it's sort of about nine pages long. Um, who is it that? Um, I guess I don't remember looking at this last year or the year before, I'm sure we had it, but who is it that's going to sign this? These two boxes are blank, at least as I see it. Whose signature goes on here? That's a question I actually had. I mean, that's a question I actually had. We, we got it yesterday, forwarded on. I wanted to get that question in regards to, is this a rep letter for the whole town? That, that would normally the CFO signs a rep letter, but is it for the full town or is it town piece signed by me and board of ed piece signed because I don't see that budget. I don't see yeah. the what goes through there. So I am uncomfortable signing something as the whole town when two thirds of the budget, I have no concept yeah. of what goes No, no, I agree. So I think I want to make sure that I think that there's a one one the way I read this, one of the boxes would be for the board of ed. That's what I want. There's yeah. two boxes, one for you, one for the board of ed. And I think that's right. I think we've I think we've done that in the past. Um is that, is that how it goes, Joe? That's yeah. what we've done in the past. So okay. I'm I'm that I'm positive of. Perfect. I guess what I'm wasn't sure is I, I guess I thought, and I'd like to go back to the earlier files because you know, sometimes when I do things, I assume if they're going to change, people tell me. And I guess I'm a little surprised that we don't have first selectman and the superintendent signing this. Because I think if I was the CFO, I mean I, I don't know how you could accept this unless they signed it, because when you go through it and you read it. It's both. I read last year's and this year to do too. side by side last night. I mean, there's only one main change. Last section year? number three. Who signed it last year? Though? Um, I actually couldn't tell the. Um, I guess there's things in here about fraud and other things of that nature that. Joe, uh, Joe, do you have last? Who, 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 who are you asking to sign this? Um, 
I think we're yeah. it's it's just the CFO on both sides. Right. So you don't get you don't get the equivalent of the CEO. You don't get As you don't get the you, know, you don't get the first selectman or the mayor and and the superintendent to sign it. We don't because the representations are. We rarely interact with those people. We do it. We we do our fraud inquiries and that type of thing. But other than that, during the audit process, they're not making representations to us. Well, I guess I I guess I'd like to do two things. One, I'd like to go back to as many prior years as we have in our files, and find out since we started the audit committee, is that the way it's always been? Because if that's the old way, it's always been shame on me. Okay, um, because I didn't catch it before. But if I was the CFO of the Board of Education of the town, I wouldn't sign it unless the first selectman signed it. And if I was the you know same thing in the Board of Ed, I wouldn't sign it unless the superintendent signed it. Uh, you all can do what you want at the end of the day, but just telling you what the facts are. No, I would tend to partially agree with that. You know, there's certain things like six months of the year I wasn't there. Go ahead. I can't attest yeah. to the six months. I know what I did going forward, yeah. but in reading it with some of the things that this yeah. wasn't violated, the but, you know, they were things that I would be concerned about in signing a yeah. rep letter in my first year because I six months of it I wasn't. No, I agree. And I did. I agree with that, but um, I but I just I read back and forth where I mean a lot of the stuff that's in here is stuff that yes they the auditors would have interacted with me on versus Kevin or the first selectman, so it, it's a hard one because there's a lot of details that. Kevin wouldn't have known because I'm sharing it with the auditors. He, he's not into the weeds to right. that level, well, but it goes back and forth. Time out. Yep. You know, <laughs> as the a citizen of the town, yep. I would not take the excuse that first selectman didn't know about it. No, not know. Is it my you, you know the right word? No, I understand, no. but I'm just saying he sh he should know about it. I don't know if he's on the phone, but he should. He's the boss. <laughs> he is the boss, but I, I probably said it the wrong way in terms of. When I'm doing my journal entries and I'm doing my accruals for uh, payroll to make sure that it's accrued back into the last year, I wouldn't expect that's something I'm going to report to him that I did that journal. And that's that's the level I'm but, talking about, not any higher level. In most companies, the CEO and the CFO sign off on their letter rep. Okay. They sit down. The CEO doesn't know everything that the CFO knows. And the CFO doesn't know everything the CEO knows. Exactly. They right. together have to sit down, have a discussion, and say, "Have you left? If I was, if I was Kevin, I'd say, have you left anything out that's important?'" You say, "No." You ask me, "Is there anything you get going on out there that, you know, that that, that may have a may, may that be that's big of the future that you haven't, that we haven't disclosed and should?" No. Fine, right? then you both sign it. That's typically what you say. You you would hear a team. Give me one second and I'll give you, I just, I'm getting, I got the, um, the drafts you handed out mixed up with my draft. So I had my notes on that, on my draft, but just give me one second. I'll get it. Here we go. Getting there. Joe, well, while we're doing that, are there any, Observations or comments about internal controls, uh, particularly confirm that there's no, you know, material or, or, you know, significant or whatever level of weaknesses that you might be planning yeah. on, commenting on. Yeah, I think you have a draft. It's just of the one recommendation that's, that's been there for a couple of years, but there's no internal controls, significant deficiencies. It's just kind of a best practice regarding advanced collections. We have a draft. Do we have a draft? Oh, good. Do we have a draft of something? Oh, oh I but, include, I may not include it in the hard copy. My my apologies. It's a one page. Okay, it sends the draft. It, That's the fine. Recommendation was good. to uh, advance tax collections, and then all the findings from the years before were all addressed. Okay. So I'll That'd be apology about that. Good. Yeah, just to kind of cover it. So okay. so just um, you know I I didn't study everything, but just just for example on. Going back to that management discussion, uh, management representation letter, page four, um, I just circled uh, items. And again, I went through this quickly, but items 15, 16, 21 um, being a couple areas that, you know, at a minimum, just, just a few examples of places where Kevin or, or um, Brian would be the ones that would really, 
Yeah, you have to get them on board for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the other ones where you talk about you know federal regulations and so on, it just seems to me that you know. And, and the other thing which I also now that I'm thinking about this because I'm boy, I, I'll eat my hat if this wasn't signed by them in the past, but we did have a procedure where the department heads provided a rep representation to the, to the CFO. And again, um, if I was the CFO, I would want that in my file that I got these representation from the department heads, which is standard in business. Yep. And, and I know that we've been doing that. I know we've done that in the past. Now, whether we did it last year or not, if I asked that question last year, but there's no question we did that in the past and there's no question that the minutes will reflect that. So, you know, so I guess, and if, you know, I realized a lot of stuff this year, but um, my suggestion to you would be, you know, one, um, and also the, I'd say on the Board of Education side as well, um, I'm positive that the minutes in the past reflected this, okay? And I'll eat the minutes if it doesn't be so what do you think? Yeah. Look, I don't I'm sorry. Minutes that Brian and I have signed this document for this year. Yeah. 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 So this is the second one, but we've signed a representative. Yeah, I'm positive of that. And and then the representation from the department heads, if, if you haven't yet done that, you know, fine. Uh, but you know, over the next week or two, and it was a pretty, you know, it was pretty it was an abbreviated representation, but you know, in other words, it's sort of asking them some questions. Hey, do you know anything that, you know, I should know in terms of completing it? I, I just think that's, you know, good hygiene and uh, you, you should do that. And, you know, if you, and hey, if we come up with something three weeks, three weeks from now that we wish we would have known today, we'll deal with it. But I just think that's a thing you should put in. And I'm sorry, I hadn't thought about that earlier to mention it to you, but. I'll, I'll look at it. Yeah, because I, I tried to go through last year to, to make sure that we were following the same process, but. I'll go through and see if we yeah. what. And it may, we maybe we missed it last year. I just figured it was built in. Because it looked well. Uh, just looking through our files, it looks like something was done in 2019. Was the yeah, last 2019? Time okay. That there was a department letter. Okay, we can put that process. Back. Oh, I forgot to ask about it in 20 and 21. Yeah, we'll put yeah. that process. Back COVID back. related, but that we should go. We should reinstitute that, and I guess we should do is maybe. Um, why don't we as a byproduct of this exercise maybe create a checklist so that when we do audits you know we have a checklist of items to, so so i don't have to remember it and so you don't have to remember it because i know i'm not going to be here forever so that you know that's diane have, and i have talked about processes that we want to implement we want to do basically weekly monthly quarterly annually so yeah. all our yeah. internal processes yeah. that mm -hmm. we have yeah. deadlines yeah. and what we expect yeah, um, but Anne, i i i would think um, should be helpful. You know, you could tell people the audit committee chair said, I need to get this. And, and, and I think you do. And I think, you know, you can tell Kevin the same thing. He has to sign it and we should, you know, shame on us for, we missed it in 20 and 21, but not much we can do about it. If you get a good one this year, we'll, you know, okay, <laughs> okay great. Let me know about that. So then, um, let me go back to find my agenda. Actually, it's misplaced. There's so many papers here. We want the agenda. Yeah, Bill. Bill, I had, I had a quick question because um, I, I think from what I heard earlier about you know the MDA is really the th you know like massaging the wording is maybe all that's that's left, but the numbers were all fine. I just wanted to follow up on a couple of other edits I had shared yesterday or some materials over the past week um, relating to SIPC insurance like excess SIPC insurance as well as the collateralization piece um Diane and Ann were you able to as I'm looking at the latest draft it doesn't look like changes were made to that quite yet but I just want to make sure that those are forthcoming um we're still working through what you've asked because some of it's not clear in the documentation um not the s not the first one I, I forget the acronym um but from the there's nothing in the JP Morgan Chase one that shows the full um, information that the auditors need at this time. So we were going to come back to you on saying, is there some other document once we had a chance? We, you know, because it's not held in our. By the name. time he came back, it's not held in our name. So the Webster money market is held in our. The collateralization is held in our name, not under the bank. 
we got confirmation of that. Um, so we would be coming back to you once we had a chance to talk to um, our auditors on it, on what rec specific requirements they need, because what you sent is not covering it from a collateralization standpoint. And please, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong on that one, yeah. but- I mean, we did um, just send it to them. When did I get it? Yesterday, late 4.30. Yeah, so we, we sent it to them. They didn't have any time to really go through it with all the preparation for the meeting today. So uh, we'll touch base with that. And then if, if anything changed, the schedule will go out to show you that the, the categorization of our cash will have changed it in, in different buckets if that's the case. But there wasn't anything quickly looking at some of that document that says it was fully collateralized in her name. Yeah, if, if, if you could send me, I guess, whatever it was that Webster sent so that I could then share that with JPMC to see if they can provide us something similar. Because I just asked them to, to provide us with evidence that all of our deposits were fully collateralized. It was in a phone call where they said, oh, and we keep track on the back end of what the apportionment is between the different municipalities. Um, and so I don't know if that's something that Webster, if they shared like a form that evidences that, but maybe if you could share that with me, I can share that with them and see if they can give us something similar to, to wrap that piece up. So just so I can clarify, what Webster's in a specific account, and that's a collateralized account, that's the way it's designed. The JP Morgan information that was sent, that they're just following the state statutes at 25%. That's what they sent you. So unless you have a separate account that's collateralized like Webster, or you have a separate collateral agreement, then you're only getting 25%. And I think that definitely that's not what you sent us is just documenting that they filed with the state that they're collateralizing 25 percent no that's not what the form i shared yesterday with the team said it showed what the total public deposits are in connecticut and then it shows that they are over collateralized by i think by 13 or 14 million dollars they have a, a letter of credit over 100 million they have public deposits um of 87 million um and so so it was showing an over collateralizing of public deposits of which we are a portion of yeah so i don't know which form was sent to you but i the, the form i provided showed that we are that that all their public deposits are over collateralized in connecticut as of june 30 2022 they also explained that they've been under they were under a consent order since the financial crisis in 2008 2009 up through November of 2022 that required them to fully collateralize public deposits in Connecticut to that 100% level. So they weren't allowed to, to give us less collateral than that by by the consent order that they were under. So so, so I, I really do think it, it sounds like you you weren't given maybe the, the you know the information that, that I provided. I'm not sure what what information you were looking at, but I I have the form in front of me. It doesn't it doesn't say that. We forwarded everything that you included, Andrew. So we'll, we can revisit that because the orders, like I said, it came late uh, in the evening yesterday for that that we turned around. So uh, we need to discuss that further. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Ha happy to join an offline discussion about that. Thanks. So we don't have that. Yeah. So um, just a couple of housekeeping things, Joe. Um, would you or Catherine go back to your earlier representations? And I'd like to understand. Now you took a representation 19, 2019, which included the um, first selectman and the superintendent. And in 2020, presumably that wasn't there. I guess, you know, that would have bothered the hell out of me if I was an audit partner. But you take a look at that and explain to me, you know, how you allowed that change. And um, I, I will assume that, and you'll, you'll get those signatures and the board of ed will have all those signatures and you know it's up to you whether you get the department reps but my strong recommendation would be you know that you as the cfo get those department rec representations um i just think it's i just you know i think you and kevin think you and kevin would want you to get them i think you you, you would want yourself to get them but yeah you know, at the same time that's up to you but i would definitely do that and i'd get them for this year you know when we year we're fin you know the year we're finishing, even if you get them over the next two or three weeks. In my recollection when we drafted that department rep, it was uh, it was you know it wasn't as as long as this. It was pretty short. There were half a dozen questions on it that people just initial the bottom of it. You know, you know, 
which basically did they tell you everything because that's that's you know that's the risk right that someone doesn't tell you something you know so we, we have those two items um i i guess um i think what we should be able to do is work on the mdna over the next week or so as far as we can get that um i think we should thank the board of ed for you know the cooperation and all the stuff that they put in here i think the financial statements are you know in reasonably good shape we got a few loose ends here and there um so i'd like to recommend i'd like to ask robin who's on the phone and the committee members here if we could approve the financial statements with some modifications to come the mdna to be worked on a little bit and then if it's okay delegate to chuck and to robin to review any final changes for the committee with the full expectation that we will we have approved them with them to review any changes go ahead and mail to the board of ed when you want and we'll just make we need to uh bill it's robin i support that good robin thank you chuck you yeah. okay with that so we got that and then um i think the um the only other thing we have here is just before we close off is uh, we, we have a, a schedule of audit committee meetings and go through the yeah ju just for the committee there we, we have to post uh, meetings for the next year i think they're so, okay so as issued get some feedback yeah no, if they're okay as issued you can go I'm ahead okay and i that. talk about so, it so we'll, we'll do that yeah and then the um the other one is um i think the february 27th meeting um yeah, I don't think, and unless you want it, that we need it, um, which 24th. is the twenty fourth. Twenty fourth, I guess. If, if the twenty seventh is when we going to town yeah, council, the twenty fourth meeting. If we get this wrapped up, you know, yeah. within the next week. Yeah, or we'll so, we'll just do it on the side. We'll do it on the side once Robin and yeah. yourself are, are comfortable. Yeah. So with we won't have to have it. Yes, yeah. yes, everybody so should agree. the twenty fourth. And, yeah. and I guess the only thing I'd say, if there's any question about the rep the way to rep the representations for you know are important to me that the first selectman and the superintendent sign them so if they you know we'll go back and redo everything if they're not going to sign them so <laughs> no so i mean it's subject to them signing it because because if because if the first selectman is not going to sign it then i'm not so sure i'm going to sign it so you know <laughs> but you, you understand what i'm saying so I'm, I'm sure that's not going to be a problem so we don't need the meeting on the 24th we'll go before the town council on the 27th we have uh do, do you have can you review that little I'll slide? It, I'll send it around. There's just a, like I mentioned, there's a one page slide, slide? that yeah, we'll use as discussion to... points for that meeting okay. on 27th. And yeah, I'll, I've yeah. got something drafted. I'll send yeah. it around. And yeah. yeah, if you send it around and we'll, once we finalize, we'll send it back with the other one that yeah. Linda had put together yeah. in the same format. And we'll. And the only thing I'd like to just conclude by saying is that um, I, I like the minutes to reflect, you know, because I've talked to Ann about this, talked to Chuck about this. Talk to the other committee members. Joe, you and I have talked on two occasions about this. I know that we're delayed two months in terms of getting the financial statements completed or filed, whatever the correct terminology is. And that, um, you know, I think we understand the whys and the wherefores of that, which, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but that primarily is some staffing issues that we've had in the past, over the past year. You know, you are new. Um, there was some housekeeping, some tidying up some things we had to do um when a new person comes in they look at the, they do it a different way and they modify things but joe you, you you've told me i think in the past what i've heard and you've told me that there's none of those adjustments or things we had to fix or modify or get right or whatever were material in terms of us having to redo the financial statements of the prior years which would have been 21 and 20 and 19 you know we're in fact doing the 22 year so, so there's you know if there was an adjustment it's just immaterial fell into 22 but there was nothing we need to go back and restate recast or re-estimate for the prior years i, I know ann told me that joe is that for the record is that what you've told me as well yes i looked at the the specific things that were done and and, and they're they were all immaterial adjustments fine just, so uh, if uh, if we could make sure the minutes reflect that, that, I think that would be important, you know. Uh, and then we don't need the minutes to reflect it, but um, 
you know, I know that next year, no one wants to be doing this in February um, for Valentine's Day. So we're going to try to get it done for um, Thanksgiving or that's what you said, or Halloween, was it? No, we <laughs> no, but you understand what I'm saying, yeah. Sam and I are very, you know, there's a lot of procedures we're trying to put in place right now. We're still obviously monthly closings, things like that, that we want. So when we come to June, we're not catching up for, we're closing June, which yeah. then yeah. flows into closing the year. And then by, uh, once we have all the uh, last entries of the Board of Ed, because they go through August, uh, July and August, September's our month to get everything done and cleaned yeah. up and yeah. in good shape that we can turn it over. Yeah. I so think at a minimum, we should strive to file um, in, in the first two weeks of December, right? To get it, to get it done, which should be a, a goal we have. I, I'd like to. Yeah. No, and I'd um, like to, yeah. Which would be, um, you know, Joe, it just always boggles my mind that um, towns which um, have relatively small budgets take six months to do their reports when most public companies by law must do it in two months, but. It's the complexities of everyone hates the 60 day term, but you know, there's a, there is a lot of that, especially how the statutes rule with the board of ed. There's nothing you can do for two months until you yeah. get those numbers in across the state. Yeah. So until that's filed and you know, they're final, you know, you've got your numbers from that side because all that payroll has yeah. to get approved back. Then you can start saying, but we, in, in the meantime, in those two months are working on our closing. Yeah, no, that's fine. So it's getting into that groove of getting that. If, if I know I have a monthly closing on my balance sheet to clean every month or. Yeah, I agree. Month, That'd be great. Then that's the place where we're just doing the yeah. closing entries, the year end entries right. that you have to do at that point. And right. that's it. That's the level I want. Joe, to does anybody in the state of Connecticut file within 90 days? Um, very few. I'd say none this year at all, but there are some really small towns that might get done in, in 90 days, but uh, in general, and, and they probably don't have a board of ed, so there's some towns that they're in a region or something like that, that they're very small that they might get done, but the majority are, are, are filed in December. Good. Could you maybe put do a little survey and give that to Ann and I? I yeah. can show where to find it. All, all the dates of filing are on the state website, so it's sure. downloadable. So we could send the send the link. Maybe you could out, just, uh, send the link, or you'd probably know better who who has a board of it. Not we're blaming, not that we're blaming on the board of ed. They get so just so I know it. This is a state statute that the board of ed's under, so there's nothing they have to file their EFs. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. So it's it, it is that's what it is. Yeah, so I'm just saying that good. some towns have a board of uh, ed, some, some don't. Yeah. But if they don't, uh, just, you know, but if it would be interesting just to see what best practices are out there. Great. Okay. Um, where do we go? Bill, next? Excuse me. It's Tucker. I just have one quick question. Sorry. Home a little under the weather today. Um, when do we anticipate getting this to the town council just so that I can uh, prepare them? I know they're scheduling, they're scheduled the meeting, but I just want to let them know when they should be expecting the documents. Mid next week. Yeah, we would hope mid next week. Yeah. Okay. We've only got a couple of things to just, uh, finalize okay thank that you would be, so that would be the mid next week is like the 22nd 23rd 23rd is wednesday oh, wednesday's 20 22nd yeah so okay so then they would then, then they would have a, then they would have a week Wednesday. then they would have about a week to read they have about six days to go through it that's fine yeah, yeah that, that, was my, that was my question thank you tucker is that enough for them to read this 300 pages i i think they'll be able to handle it <laughs> <laughs> why can't they take notes <laughs> Okay, Bill, I've, I've got one comment just for Anna, you know, because of COVID, whatever, we haven't been in front of each other. I would just tell you, I am really pleased that you're here. You've been through a tough time. We're late and so forth. But I think that uh, if you said, if you lay out your plans to get this stuff done on time next year, uh, that'll be really important in the audit committee and others will be very, very pleased. So, second thing is, this is just my perspective. I mean, you think, you know, both both Bill and I were at different times, the CEO of Deloitte. And uh, my view is that for a town, especially where, where the accounting, the accounting principles are different than what most people really understand. Those people in town that would be inclined to look at our financials, they will, they, the, the letter of reps for management and, uh, and the MDNA is more important than the financial statements in the audit. 
And that's why you see us pushing around that. You know, I, I take comfort and also concern of work. The fact that you and Kevin and Brian uh, would all sit down and you guys then as a team would sign respective letters of reps is really important. Uh, it's part of the process of ensuring your financial. From my experience, I've had more clients get in trouble and actually have the firm resign because of errors in what they had said in the management reps letter than something related to the accounting and the finance. So it, it's, it, and you personally, you need Kevin to sign that too. And if there's anything big out there going on that he might know about that could impact the financial condition of the town, he needs to go on record and say, I don't, I don't know of any such thing. So uh, good luck. Thank you. Dr. Science, don't Part stay in Mexico. I, have, I really have to say, we, we have a great team in the town. Yeah. I, I, you know, between finance and all the different departments that we have, um, for me, coming in and the support I've gotten from, um, it, we have a great team. No, we, we, we're, we're great. Well. And we appreciate you getting all this done. Thanks, Ed. Good comments. Um, okay, so um, where are we up to, Chuck? We up to real quickly. I don't think we need to spend more than two minutes. The is there any? Yeah, is there anything on on the in, um, internal financials to date that would that you want to that you'd want to highlight from either a town or a, or no, a board? The only education? major thing, and you probably if you've seen, is you know utilities. So the cost of utilities right now. So we did go in front of the board of select uh, board of finance to just get approval for, um, uh, we have a special revenue fund that had funds in it. So we're using those funds for utility and we're only taking over what we need because the expect, expectation is nearly 290,000. If Tiger's still on, he can correct me, but um, the expectation by the end of the year with utilities has been high. So that's the main component. Mm -hmm. um, our revenues obviously are coming in higher with collection rate. Our supplemental taxes came in 300,000 higher then budgeted came in over nine hundred thousand. Um, interest income is going to come in five six hundred five six hundred thousand 5, 600,000 over right now with the level the that real, we're getting. The real interest income. The, the real interest income is coming in because of the rates between what Andrew's put out and mm -hmm. um, our money market where we have right now. Um, so right right now everything else is on target um, except the utilities. But then now the, we have a protection in place for that, so there won't be any over. So you mean the cost of utilities? Yes. Yes. So compared to what we budgeted. Exactly. And so when we budgeted, I mean, so for example, the Board of Education, did they not? They had savings. The Board of Ed and, and if you want to address that one, they've had savings because of their, um, what is it, not your virtual. Gas yes, conversion? We have the LED upgrades oh, okay. that are kicking in full time. All, all schools have gotten LED upgrades, building automation. And so we're really seeing savings. The, um, you know, the amount, it's, it's an incentive program where we get Roughly around fifty percent back from EverSource, and then you know, you're allowed to pay it back over the four-year period interest free. But we paid all those off already. So why why would the um, Board of Ed have savings, and the rest of the town? I mean, I just don't know the detail well enough. The rest of the town have an increase. I mean, where are we getting the increase? It's like this building, or? Um, I'd have to get the more because they they did it by building and and where they thought between the different the gas the uh, d gas. Um, electricity, electricity, electricity. But I, I can't remember offhand what what the detail. I, I did. I should have brought that in front of me. Um, but I'll get it and send it out to the committee. But and I just just wondering it would seem and a budgeting factor of what you know you're budgeting eighteen months in advance of what you think it's okay and then it spikes up on you and yeah, yeah um, no, different understand. things with the pool and different things that would spike us higher. Right. But I'll get that detail. So it'd be good if you got that to me, and then also let me know. Um, if so, if the cost of running the pool, you know, the example you use has gone up, is, I assume our revenue is going to go up too. Yeah. So we're going to increase the price. The, the utility, the, not the pool, not the, the electricity. That's what I mean, the things to, to Yeah, but, I, but like running this town pool. If, if, the, if, the, if the cost of that goes up, I assume we're going to increase the ticket price. Just so those who don't swim in the pool don't have to pay for other swimming in the pool. The, the pool is an enterprise fund, so it, it, it runs you. by itself. Thank you. The, uh, the, the increases that we had were in gasoline, diesel, heating oil, 
Um, some of the things that aren't the Board of Ed are not affected by since four out of the five schools are on natural gas at present. Um, our electricity rates are locked in through 2023. So it's not the electricity, it's just gasoline, heating oil, and diesel fuel. Diesel fuel jumped $4 a gallon. And since all of our trucks primarily run on diesel, that's one of the reasons why we're getting hit hard. That's why the Board of Ed is not, because the Board of Ed is running propane buses. It's a little bit different. So we're, 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 we're set up differently, So and we're affected differently. Is that, is that Tiger that's on the phone? Yes. Yeah. As, a, as an audit committee member, the question I get asked most often, which is not related to the audit committee, is when is Elm Street going to be finished and repaved? Oh, That's an excellent question. The, uh, the unfortunate answer is that Eversource Electric is coming in to change over all the transformers on Elm Street, Main Street, South Avenue, and Park Street over the next six, seven months. We're asking them to expedite Elm Street itself between Main and Park so that we can come in and pave that. So I'm hoping that they're going to be done in the middle of the summer and I can pave that stretch, but the rest of the work is going to go on for the rest of the year. Okay. So I'm a little, I'm a little delayed, but that's, uh, you know, we had, you can, you can imagine I had a cray and water come through, um, electric came through for other things. We had to cut for other work and now we're, uh, trying to finish. So the goal is this summer. That's a good goal. It's not an audit committee issue, but I just get asked all the time now. <laughs> now I can say I've got an answer. Uh, you're welcome. Yes. Yeah. Um, but Tiger, going back to the fuel cost, I mean, we would increase, presumably, somebody. You say it's an enterprise fund pool. Correct. But, that, but you, does that mean you don't increase the prices? It doesn't mean we don't increase the prices. It means that they're looking at, you know, how much it's costing to run the pool, but it's not necessarily affecting the other taxpayers. Right. That's you know, right. so, so yes, they are looking at whether or not they'll raise the fees for the pool at present. That's a discussion for the park and rec commission and the board of selectmen um, based upon how his, how his budget is running. But right now they've got a healthy fund balance um, uh, for the pool itself. And like I said, it, it doesn't it doesn't affect the uh, the the average taxpayer. It only affects the user of the pool. But we are we are looking at that. And uh, the board of finance made the same uh, discussion as far as the sewer fund. So trying to keep pace with whatever the sewer sewer fees go up, sewer fees would rise with uh, commensurate with the uh, the budget, so that we wouldn't have to dip into our reserves at all so that that was their comment as well so they're there the board of finance is looking at both both situations to try to stay have any increase stay current with uh with a user fee i can just um without belaboring it but i just don't understand sure. the enterprise fund i mean it, to just have a hypothetical if the pool has an increase in cost and loses a million dollars a year why does that not impact the rest of the, ta the taxpayers? Because it, it it's run off of the uh, it's run off the off of um, what comes in. So uh, the fees that come in. But what but if, so if the fees come in are X and the expenses are two X and we lose a million dollars, that's that's the reason why we have a reserve. But, but who who where did that reserve come from? The reserve came from excess excess revenue over time. So it, it's so much so that we're actually paying the town back for the solar installation and the roof installation that we did on the town funds. We're actually drawing back that off of the pool fund to um, to pay the town back for the installation since the pool was benefiting from the new roof and the uh, the savings on uh, electricity for the solar. So you're saying to, you're saying that the revenue from the ticket sales or however we collect money for the pool already exceeds the expenses and we have we have a little kitty mm -hmm. and so we could absorb more expenses when you have fluctuations like what's happening now. we have fluctuations so you're saying the ticket prices are high enough to absorb to pay for all the costs that's correct interesting okay I believe you. There's a set of financials in here. Okay, great. I think so. Um, I think we're going to decide, right? Um, yeah, I think so. 
I think we have, I think we, um, Tucker, you keep me um, within, the, within the rules here. Uh, we're going to have, uh, we're going to go through a, a cyber discussion. So I'm going to adjourn the meeting subject only to the executive session. And the executive session, uh, it's just going to be Ann, Diane, Tucker, and Cheryl, and the audit committee, and Chris. And we're going to, I think everybody else has to leave. And then the meeting will be adjourned once that executive session uh, you know, we will adjourn the meeting at the end of that executive session. Did I get that right? You did. And um, I would just say, Bob Mantilli, if you can make me host now, I can take over on, on my end. And if you'll just give us a minute, we have to put some people in the wait room and just pause recording. So let us, we'll let you know when we're ready to resume the uh, executive session. Right. Just, so you've invited in and you're adjourning at uh, 10.03 into executive session. Thank you all. Okay. okay, so just give us a moment, please, and then we'll let you know when we're ready. So this doesn't include the Board of Education. Is, so this doesn't deal with the Board of Education at all? Because they have their own cyber. They've got their, uh, yeah. There's nobody in the wait room, so we are back in regular session. Great, and did I, did I hear you say motion to adjourn? We did. I second it. You second. I'm in favor of it as well. Thank you all. Uh, Anne, you want to continue or you're done? Great. Appreciate it. Thanks all. Appreciate Thank you very much. Thank you for it. Thanks.